God to bless them tonight. Amen. Would you lift your voice uh, as loud as you can? Let's talk to Jesus all over this building. Father, we love you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your precious blood. Lord God, thank you for your name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, whether things in heaven, things on earth, or things under the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We put our trust in you tonight, Lord Jesus. Anoint us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've called us to be more than conquerors. You've made us the head and not the tail. You put us in front and not behind. You've put us above and not beneath. Thank you that you've redeemed us with your precious blood. Thank you that you've made us kings and priests unto you, O oh God. Have your way tonight. Get the glory tonight. Save, heal, and deliver. Sanctify, encourage, strengthen. Set free, Lord Jesus, from every oppression. Lord God Almighty, make your people victorious tonight because you daily give us the victory. Lord God Almighty, we bind Satan in the name of Jesus. We forbid him to operate here. We loose the power of the Holy Ghost to take full control of this atmosphere now. Have your way oh God give the glory give the honor give the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ somebody ought to say amen clap your hands on to the Lord everybody <laughs> praise God you may be seated in the presence of Almighty God all right um, we're gonna go a little bit into this here last week we dealt with Mephibosheth and of course we've been talking about uh, King David King David very important for us to consider this business of King David. Um, David, of course, is a messianic figure. He has a triple anointing on his life. What triple anointing uh, is it again? Let's see who remembers. Anointing of the prophet, what else? Anointing of the priesthood, what else? Obviously, he has the anointing of a king, all right? Now, he was anointed as a priest, but would he have been a priest in a traditional sense? Where did the, which tribe? Did the priesthood come from? Levi. Came from Levi. So the Levites provided us the priesthood. In particular, what family of Levi did the priesthood come from? Aaron, right? So you had to come from the lineage of Aaron, from the tribe of Levi, if you expected to be a priest. However, however, when you deal with the priesthood of David and later on the priesthood that we talk about in the New Testament, where, where do we trace that priesthood from? Is it from Aaron? No, no, it's not from Aaron. Not from the tribe of Levi. Somebody say it loud if you know what it is, but with confidence. Say, say, say it loud now. See, see, so how are you going to start out loud and then back down? Somebody, somebody came out loud for a little bit. They were coming in, and then they said, oh, you know what, let me throttle back, you know. <laughs> Make sure we don't want to cause no trouble live streaming all across the nation. Amen. From the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Um, and however you want to say that, Melchizedek, Melchizedek, um, because it's really a, a, a compounding of two words. All right. Melchi, from where we get the, the Hebrew term for king, and Zadik, Zadik, from where we get the Hebrew word for righteousness. So Melchizedek was the king of righteousness. That's what his name meant, the king of righteousness. And then also he was the king of Salem, and Salem means peace. So he was the king of righteousness, and he was the king of peace. Let's look at him real quick in Genesis chapter 14, uh, and then we're going to come back to 2 second, second Samuel 12 real quick. But let's just set the foundation here. Genesis chapter 14, and let's consider this priesthood, and very important to all of us that are in here. Genesis chapter 14, uh, beginning in verse 18, read verse 18, 19, and 20 for me, um, Elder. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. All right, so Melchizedek is the king of Salem, so his name means king of righteousness, and he is also the king of Salem, which means the king of peace. Abraham is coming back from a battle, and Melchizedek just meets him in the middle of nowhere. Melchizedek just comes out of nowhere and just meets 
Mel, it, Abram, and he's bringing wine and bread. Wine and bread. Now, that's germane to us in the sense that last night, what did we partake of? Communion. Wine and bread, right? It was, it was communion. So, really, it was symbolic of a first communion. First communion going on here. All right? Keep going. And he was priest of the Most High God. This Melchizedek, he was king of righteousness. He was the king of Salem. And the Bible now says he is the priest of the Most High God. This is important because usually kings and priests, they could not hold both offices. Are y'all with me here? If you're a priest, you can't be a king. And if you're a king, you can't be a priest. That was divided in Israel. The priesthood came out of the tribe of Levi. Levi. Talk to me, church. But kings came from, well, the legitimate kings came out of the tribe of Judah. But the first king came out of the tribe of Benjamin. So Saul was the first king out of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin. David became king after him out of the tribe of Benjamin. Judah. And so you see then that they were not usually coming from the same tribe. These were mutually exclusive offices. One person couldn't hold every office. So this guy, Melchizedek, is very strange. Shows up in Genesis. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of peace. And he is a priest of the Most High God. The term is El Elyon in Hebrew. The Most High God. He's a king. He's a priest. And he just bursts on the scene. Just comes out of nowhere and shows up. And what else happens? Read. And he blessed him and said. And this guy shows up and blesses Abraham. Now I need you to understand, you got to be somebody to bless Abraham. Amen. Because Abraham is the father of faith. Amen. So in order for him to bless Abraham, he had to be greater than Abraham. And there's not a whole lot of folk on earth in history who can claim that they were greater than Abraham. Y'all not talking to me. Y'all know, how many in here know that Abraham was special? Abraham was so special, the Bible calls him the friend of God. Amen. Anybody in here ever had a real friend? I don't know how you are with your friends, but me and my friend, we're close. When you have a real friend, now, I heard one preacher say this, and it's true, that to get a real friend in a lifetime, you're blessed. So if you really get a real friend in a lifetime, you're blessed. Usually somebody only gets one real friend in their lifetime. If you get two, you're double blessed. So if you up in here got a bunch of friends, yeah, that's how social media fooling us. <laughs> Talk about, I got friends on social media. No, you don't. No, you don't. I remember when Twitter just came out, and, and somebody told me to get on Twitter. And uh, I went to one camp, and I preached and said, Brother Collins, you got to get on Twitter. Uh, you know, people want to see something. So I got on Twitter, and, you know, people started following, following, following. It got up into the hundreds, and then it got over 1,000. It was going. And then, you know, so I was in there. I'm checking my Twitter feed every now and then to see, uh, you know, what's going on on Twitter, and I put something out there, and, and, and my wife says, she just turned to me one day, <laughs> this is way back, this, is, this Twitter just came out. She said, mm, 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 mm. well, Sister Collins is not helping, she's not good for my ego, terrible. She said, she said, got a lot of followers, huh? I said, yeah, look, I said, man, this is a blessing, you know, people, are, she says, those people are not following you. I said, what do you mean? It says followers right there. She said, she said, the people that get up, get dressed, put their clothes on, and come to church and sit and follow you at church, those people are following you. She said, these people out here, they don't even know you. <laughs> They're not following you. <laughs> well, yep, just deflate the ego. Say, well, there it is. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't pay much attention to it now, but that's how social media fools you. You got friends. Not really. Those are not your friends. So I don't know how people share so much intimate details of their life with people that you don't know. We up in here all trying to be superstars. We need to put it down. Amen. How many glad that Jesus is the bright in the morning star? Amen. We all in a reality show. Got our own soundtrack. <laughs> no, stop it. Those are not your friends. Well, the Bible said Abraham was the friend of God. When the Bible says Abraham was the friend of God, that is a real friendship that existed between God and a man. 
So much so that God said, if you look, just leave right there and I'm going to bless you. And he literally pinned the salvation of the whole world to Abraham. Whew. He said, because in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So in here tonight, if you ever meet Abraham, you need to give him high respect. If, if Abraham shows up, get up if you see him coming in your general direction. If Abraham shows up, thank him for having faith. Not for being, not, Abraham wasn't perfect. Abraham had faith Amen. that when God said something, he believed God. And God said, I'm going to put righteousness in your bank account. And Abraham became the father of all of us. We are all the children of Abraham by faith. Amen. Melchizedek, ble Abraham knelt down so Melchizedek could put his hand on his head and bless him. So that means whoever this Melchizedek is, it must be somebody really important. That the friend of God said, I need you to bless me. What else? Read, read, read and he it. blessed him and said, What do you say? Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. He said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. Possessor of heaven and earth. Possessor of heaven and earth. And he and blessed be the Most High God. And blessed be the Most High God. Which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand. Amen. And he gave him tithe of all. And the Bible says that Abraham turned around and paid tithe to Melchizedek. So you know whoever Melchizedek was. He had to be somebody really great. Let's look at the explanation. Uh, scripture interprets scripture. Say that with me. Say scripture. Scripture. Interpret scripture. Interpret scripture. Let's say it again. Scripture. Scripture. Interpret scripture. Interpret scripture. So if you read a scripture, there's usually another scripture somewhere that explains the scripture that you just read. All right? So let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. Let's see if we can get some explanation on what's going on with Abraham and this Melchizedek. So go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 7, mm, mm, mm. beginning in verse 1, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 1. When you found it, say amen. Amen. All right, Bible study. Read for me. For this Melchizedek. This Melchizedek. King of Salem. He was the king of Salem. Priest of the Most High God. Priest of the Most High who God. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king. Keep going. And blessed him. And blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. And Abraham gave this man... A tenth of all. Keep reading. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness. He was the king of righteousness. And after that, the king of Salem. Mm -hmm. which, which is? Which is king of peace. Watch this now. Without father. This man, Melchizedek, without father. Without mother. Without mother. Without descent. Without descent. Having neither beginning nor day. Having no beginning of days. Nor end of life. Nor end of life. But made like the son of God. But made like unto the son of God. A bad of the priest continues. Are y'all seeing this? <laughs> this guy, Melchizedek, he is something different. He has no beginning of days. He has no end of life. He has no descent. Made like unto who? The son of God. You know, there's some scholars that actually believe, and I'm just going to throw this out there because you're going to run into it, and, and then you know you're going to say, well, pastor said. So, yeah, so let me say what pastor said. And tell you what some people say. Some people argue that Melchizedek was actually Shem. Because Shem was still alive uh, right around the time of Abraham. So, so some people argue that this was Shem that came to bless uh, um, Abraham. I disagree. Because the New Testament, and that argument comes from a Jewish source. But from the New Testament, Scripture interprets Scripture. And the New Testament interprets the Old Testament. And according to the New Testament... This man Melchizedek was greater than Abraham, had no beginning of days, had no end of life, and is like the son of God. Amen. Am I, am I, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So I'm going to go with what Paul said over what any rabbi says. I'm going with Rabbi Paul. Did y'all know Paul was a rabbi? Amen. Yes, he was. Studied at the feet of Gamaliel. Talk back to me, church. So he's a bona fide rabbi. And I'm going with what he said. Keep reading. Now consider how great this man was. Consider how great this man Melchizedek was. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil. That even Abraham paid tithe to this man. 
And verily that that are the sons of Levi, mm -hmm. who received the offices of the priesthood, mm -hmm. have a commandment to take the tithes. He of said the, the only people supposed to take tithes are the Levites. Keep According going. According to the law. According to the law. Is their brethren, though they come out of this loins of Abraham. Even though they're Abraham's children. But he whose descent is not counted from them receives tithes of Abraham. But this man Melchizedek, who didn't come from Abraham, received tithes from Abraham. And Read. blessed him that he had the promises. And blessed him that had the promises. Keep going. And without all contradiction. And without all contradiction, the, the less is blessed of the better. So the scripture says that Melchizedek was better than Abraham. Amen. Lord have mercy. And you got to be somebody to be better than Abraham, the friend of God, of whom we all are partakers because we are all the children of Abraham by faith. Amen. Why? Because Melchizedek was a, what I would believe a theophany, a representation of Jesus Christ himself. Yes, sir. I believe that Jesus Christ himself, God was manifesting this messianic king priest. Because Jesus, even though he's from the tribe of Judah, he is our high priest. Are y'all with me right here? Jesus is our high priest. You know this is true. Amen. Drop down in that same chapter 7. Amen. Read from verse 15. What does it say? I'll read from verse 14 for context. Read. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So Jesus came out of Judah. Mm -hmm. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. No priest was supposed to come out of Judah. They come out of Levi. Read. And it is yet far from evident mm -hmm. for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. So now Jesus is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Look at verse 24, same chapter. But this man, this man, because he continues ever, mm -hmm. has an unchangeable priesthood. He has an unchangeable priesthood. Keep going. Whereas he is able also to save them mm -hmm. to the uttermost that come unto God. unto God by him. So sin. Jesus can save all of us because he has a priesthood. It is an everlasting priesthood. It is a greater priesthood than any priesthood that existed on the earth before. Yes, sir. Now, David when he got that anointing on his life, acted like he was a priest too. Why? Not because he was a Levite, but he had that triple anointing, prophet, priest, and king. This is important to you because you are partaker of the Davidic covenant that I've been teaching about for the last few weeks. Look, look at y'all looking at me in that tone of voice. So how do, how do we come into that, pastor? Somebody asked me, how, how do I become a priest, pastor? Somebody asked me. Come on, ask me like you want it. Ask her, how do I become a priest, Pastor? What if I told you you were already a priest? Amen. Would you be able to handle it? Yes, sir. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 1. Let me show you what Jesus did for you. See, you are, tell your neighbor beside you, you are in Christ. You are in Christ. And Christ is the high priest. Okay, this word Christ means the anointed one. If you're in Christ, you're anointed. Tell your neighbor you're anointed. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, and we're going to read what the Lord did for you. Read from verse 5 to verse 6. Everybody got it? Say amen. Amen. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 to 6. Go. And from Jesus Christ. From Jesus Christ. Who is the faithful witness. Yes. And the first begotten of the dead. Yes. And the prince of the kings of the earth. That's right. Unto him that loved Look us. at your neighbor and say, that's me. Say, he loved me. Love me. Right, so some, some people thinking, see, when you read the Bible, you're thinking he's talking about somebody else. No, it says to him that loved us. Uh, somebody say us. Uh, Point to yourself. Say that's us. Us up in here. Us. All right. Read. And washed us from our sins. Tell your neighbor that's us. Blood. We were washed. Jesus washed us with his precious blood from our sins. How many in here glad that you've been washed in the blood? How many of y'all been baptized in the precious name of Jesus? Your sins have been removed. Washed in the blood. Look at what Jesus did. Not only did he love you and wash you in his blood, read. And has made us kings and priests. And has made us. Look at your neighbor and say, that's us. He's still talking about us. Has made us what? Kings and priests. Kings and priests. Unto Are God. Unto God. God. Do you all see that? 
Y'all, y'all, y'all better get this thing in your sanctified soul. Look at First Peter chapter 2. Let me show you, because you know you shouldn't build a doctrine on just one scripture, right? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Look at First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Tell your neighbor we're still talking about y'all. Let's take it south. All right, First Peter chapter 2. Take it south. Tell your neighbor we're still talking about us's. Yes, I don't even know how that works. I don't ask me. I don't, I don't make grammar. First Peter 2. <laughs> Amen. First Peter chapter 2. Read verse 9 for me, elder. What you got? Verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a chosen generation. Let's see what else you are. What else? A royal priesthood. Tell your neighbor, you are a royal priesthood. You boy, y'all better get this. I rebuke every spirit of low self-esteem tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody need to lift your hand and say, God, whatever God says I am, that's what I am. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. Read that again. Start from the top. But you are a chosen generation. Tell your neighbor you're chosen. Don't let the devil tell you you're not nobody. You're chosen. A royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. Talk to your neighbor and tell him you're royalty and you're a part of the priesthood. So you have a purpose. Glory to God. There is a reason for your life. You are on earth to do the will of God. Don't let that devil talk you down from where God put you. Glory to God. You need to rebuke Satan. Every time devil tells you you're nobody, tell him the Bible says I'm a chosen generation. The Bible says I'm a royal priesthood. What else? A holy nation. We are a holy nation. Glory to God. That means we're supposed to walk in holy. That's why we have to live holy. Amen. What else? A peculiar people. And we are a peculiar people. Look at your neighbor. I thought you were peculiar. Just tell him. I thought you were peculiar. <laughs> yeah. Kind of peculiar. <laughs> Praise God. We're a peculiar people. <laughs> what else, sir? Keep reading. That you should show forth the praise of him. That you should show forth the praise of him. Talk to me, church. Who has called you out of darkness. Who have called you out of darkness. Into, into what? His marvelous light. How many glad that God called you out of darkness? Called you into marvelous light. Change your identity. You weren't chosen till God chose you. Glory to God. You weren't in the priesthood till God put you in the priesthood. You weren't royalty, but God made you royalty. You're now peculiar people in the holy nation. God wants you to praise him. I feel, but that, that makes me feel better. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. neighbor say, I feel better. Just tell somebody, I feel a little better now. All right. Which is why then, if you are that, David had this triple anointing, and he's a type of that. We walk in that through Christ. Then everything that's written the four times written for our learning. So now, as a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, we should live right. Isn't that right? Amen. There's just some things that you shouldn't do if you're in the priesthood. Like I could talk about liquor, for example. The Bible says it's not for kings to drink wine, nor princes strong drink, lest they forget the law and pervert judgment. Because, you know, some folks say, well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I can drink a little bit. I can get a little my drink on every now and then. No, you can't. Why? Because you're royalty. Me? Yes, you. Oh, I'm going to say it again. So I felt a brick spirit rise up somewhere. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where that resistance came from in the spirit. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor your royalty. Put that wine cooler down. <laughs> put that lick. Put it down. Whatever it is. Put that Ostis Pomonte down. Put up that Cavassier. Throw it out in the name of Jesus. That's if you have money. Put down that Cisco if you ain't got no money. Whatever. Bootleg, moonshine. None of it. Well, I'm not getting into health drinks. I'm talking about alcohol. Is there alcohol content in it? If there's alcohol content in it, children, don't drink it. Use rubbing alcohol for aches and pains. Don't drink. I don't care where they sell it. Publix, Winn-Dixie, 7-Eleven. I don't care what it looks like. Alcohol content 2%. It is illegal for you. Why? Because tell your neighbor, you're royalty. And because you're royal, there's stuff you can't do that royalty can do. And stuff that royalty should not do that other people can get away with. There's stuff that, have you, who in here has noticed you get in trouble all the time? Real talk. Who in here has noticed you were in school 
Everybody was talking, and you the only one got called out. Folk was doing craziness in the bathroom, you the only one got caught. Everybody was speeding down the highway, you the only one got pulled over. And it, who, wave your hand if you ever felt like, wait a minute, hold up. Don't you see all? Oh. Tell your neighbor, your royalty. <laughs> so, there's a lot of scrutiny on you. Everywhere you go, paparazzi everywhere. All those, the, the cameras you hear snapping are demons following you, trying to trip you up. And your security detail angels surround you in a bubble, pushing off demons that are trying to get, come on and talk to me. You don't realize it, but you're surrounded by the angels of God and the enemy trying to trip you up. And you are, ro you are more royalty than King Charles. Did you hear every baptized believer under the sound of my voice? You are more royalty than Kate Middleton. You are more royalty than Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Amen. I'll take it. Go ahead and take it, sis. You better take it. Don't let, don't let, you know, we, the things we're running after, you trying to be a celebrity, don't even realize. Tell your neighbor, you're already a child of God. You're already a celebrity status. You're already a royal. Well, the things that you're running down, God already gave it to you. But you can't see it because you're looking with the wrong lens. Because you're looking with your natural eye and you can't see him the spirit. Tell somebody beside you, if you knew what God did for me, you'd treat me different. See, the, 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 if we knew what God did, oh boy, I feel God. I feel somebody getting a revelation. If you knew where you were sitting, your physical body is sitting right here, but your spirit is sitting in the presence of God right now because the Bible said we're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. So even though your physical body is here, you have a spiritual representation in the invisible realm. There's so much going on with you right now. If we could only see. Y'all ever read Isaiah chapter 6? Who's read Isaiah chapter 6? You ever read that chapter where the Bible said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. High and lifted up, and his train filled the what? Temple. Temple. And God's throne was there, and above it stood some, some angels called seraphim. They had how many wings? Six. Six wings. With two, they covered their face. Two, they covered their feet. Two, they did fly. And they cried what? Oh. Holy, oh. holy, holy. Now, remember where I, Isaiah said he saw that. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the what? All right, look, look at your neighbor and say, tell your neighbor this, what? Just tell him, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? So if you could catch the revelation, you would know that the same seraphim that was flying in the temple that Isaiah saw is the same seraphim flying over your head. See, 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 you think you come to church and don't realize you are the church. Everywhere you go, angels show up. Everywhere you go, there are seraphim. Everywhere you go, there are cherubim. Everywhere you go, there's a praise service going on around you. Every time you lift your hands, angels are joining in. Every time you lift up a worship and a prayer, angels are lifting your prayer up into heaven. Revelation said they bring it up like incense before the Lord. You don't realize what you're in. You're a royal priesthood. So tell your neighbor there's stuff you can't do. It's illegal for you. Somebody else get away with it. You can't. Sometimes the Lord will send stuff just to block you from doing foolishness. Anybody ever plan to do foolishness and the Lord just lays stumbling blocks in the way? I mean, you had a plan. Get ready to book it down tonight. Oh, yes. Got in the car. I'm down the road. Mm, 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 mm. That's right. Amen. And God will send one of the church mothers to pull up right beside you at the red light. And you better get your groove on. Just turn to the left. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. On your way to trouble now. You're on your way. Stopped up at Walmart to get some accessories to accentuate your trouble. And sure enough, here come pastor down that aisle. Praise the Lord. Says, how you doing? Praise him. <laughs> Amen. So what in the world are you doing here now? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Sometimes I'm on my way to church and it's late, like 1.30 in the morning. I'm telling you, 1.30 in the morning, I'm heading to church. So I'll stop off, because if I'm heading to church, I'm picking up snacks too, you know. So I stop off at 7-Eleven. So you know, folks don't expect me to be out that time of night, like, Pastor doing out here. So I pull up, so I'm telling you, I pulled up into parking lots and witnessed people that I know. And I'm sitting in the car, and I'm usually trying to stay inconspicuous. And then I come out and say, praise him, or, you know, <laughs> come on. Oh, hallelujah. Say, my goodness, what are you? You're just everywhere. No, I just happened to be picking up some snacks. <laughs> and the Lord made sure that he brought me there right at that time. Thank you, Jesus. Bec Why? Tell your neighbor because the Lord loves you. And because you're royalty. So sometimes the Lord will just send stuff. you on your way to trouble and the tire goes out. Y'all not saying nothing. Who you think let the air out that tire? Angel, your angel just went, psst. <laughs> So by the time you get done fixing the tire, oh, Lord, just head back home. Thank you, Lord. Nothing, nothing's happening. The Lord is shutting things down. Somebody lift your hand and say, thank God for every door he closed. Yeah, yeah. Folks just break up with you. <laughs> So what happened? Don't love you no more. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, over. Just like that? Just like that? Why? Wasn't God's plan for you? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Say, said, but why would God hurt me like that? No, God's not hurting you. God is actually keeping you from greater hurt. Hurt more than you could imagine. The hurt you're going through right now is not worthy to be compared to the pain you would feel. Did y'all know that if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you could be possessed of a devil at any time? Amen. The scripture says that Satan takes them captive at will. So that means you could be dealing with somebody and the relationship is going great. And all of a sudden they completely lose their mind and switch. And you want what? Like you woke, we went to bed, you were Dr. Jekyll. We woke up. You are Mr. Hyde. Something happened. It's called, it's called possession. See, this is why you can't, oh God, why am I over here? This is why you cannot be unequally yoked together. We unbelievers, you over here trying to date a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. I'm going to change him. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm going to date this Hebrew Israelite. He sees me for what I am. Yeah, your wife number three. That's what you are. You and your sister wives together. See, y'all not saying nothing to me. It's the type of foolishness that we're getting involved in. You think you're going to make it through that. God, tell your neighbor, God's not trying to take all the fun out of your life. Because I know that's what you feel. Like, Lord, can I have anyone? Can I have any? No. But protection... From the enemy is, the, is one of the reasons there's holiness in your life. One of the greatest weapons of spiritual warfare is holiness, which is separation from the world. Because the spirit realm is a legal area. Whew. Why am I over here tonight? It's a legal area. Boy, somebody better get this. All of this right here tonight is free. This is not even in the plan tonight. The spirit realm is legal. Legal. That means... That means the enemy makes a case. He is the prosecuting attorney in heaven. He makes a case against you. The Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. So holiness takes away his ability to accuse or to prosecute with evidence. If he accuses you, it has to be a lie. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. That's what you want to make it, a lie. You want to make it how they accused Jesus. That was straight, bold-faced lie. Are y'all with me here? Or they rearrange his words to make it look like something different than what he was trying to say. Amen. But if you give the devil something to work with, then he can bring about oppression in your life that you don't need. Y'all not working with me here. You got to watch yourself. You know, so, so witchcraft cannot hurt you. Tell your neighbor, witchcraft cannot hurt you. But if you play with Ouija boards and tarot cards, it will. Well, I ain't got no help here tonight. 
I'm teaching it. What are you doing? I, I, well, I'm trying to rebuke witches. Well, how are you going to rebuke the witches that you over here cavorting with, hanging around with, playing with witchcraft? Hmm? What you doing? What you doing in the botanica? You know, I used to drive past botanicas. I didn't know what they were. I said, what is that? Botanica. I thought it was flowers, you know. I thought botany. I'm thinking, oh, okay, so that's where you go get flowers. I guess they, you walk in there, it is a straight place of Santeria and witchcraft. And voodoo and all this mess. Now, if you fool around with stuff like that, if you're busy checking your horoscope every day, what you're doing is you're giving the devil the legal right to interfere with, oppress, and destroy your life. If you enter into a relationship with someone who does not have the Holy Ghost, you're giving the enemy the legal right. Because whatever you join your body to, you become one with them. Talk to me, somebody. And your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it has portals, doorways, openings and so whatever you allow to connect with your body you are saying i'm allowing whatever spirit is in that person talk to me to get into you which is why you need to shut every door everything that doesn't please god shut that door every relationship that is not of god get out of that relationship and shut that door and plead the blood of jesus and say you know what i'm cutting the cord i'm cutting this shackle i'm cutting this chain i'm cutting this off because of the blood of jesus christ y'all don't want to talk this we gotta talk about these things are y'all with me here watch it now hold that hold that thought beloved hold that thought hold it till the end so now, here's David in 2 Samuel, and let's look at what happens to him. Remember I told you the devil is the prosecuting attorney of hell. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Let's begin at verse 1, and let's see what this says. And it came to pass. Came to pass. After the year that was expired. After the year was expired. At the time when the kings go forth to battle. What king's supposed to be doing right now? Battling. What are the kings supposed to be doing right now? Battling. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, who are you? Yeah. Tell your, answer your neighbor and say, I'm a royal priesthood. Tell them that God has made me a king and a priest. So read that verse again and see yourself in this verse. And it came to pass. Came to pass. After the year was expired. At the time when the kings go forth to battle. What is kings are supposed to be doing work right now? Kings are supposed to be at battle right now. Well, let's see what happens. Read. That David sent Joab. David sends Joab. And his servants with him. Mm -hmm. And all Israel. Mm -hmm. And they destroyed the children of Ammon. So they're out here fighting. And besieged Rabah. Yes. But David's tyrant still at Jerusalem. Where is David? At Jerusalem. He is relaxing. Now you have to understand that David is a warrior and a fighter. It is unlike David to send other people out and him just be at home. It's unlike David. He's a warrior king. Unlike his son Solomon, who was a man of peace, David was a man of war. Amen. The reason why he couldn't build the temple, one of the reasons was he shed too much blood. Amen. David was nothing to be trifled with. So wartime, David's not missing the battle. <laughs> he wants to be in the middle of the battle from the time he was a kid. You remember him and Goliath? Amen. Yeah. He's looking for the battle. And here it is. He is relaxing. Watch out for idleness as a child of God. You're a king. You're supposed to be doing the work of God. Anytime you find, and, and you say, Pastor, are you saying that we can't rest? Absolutely. You better rest because if you don't rest, then you won't be able to function at a high level. So rest is absolutely necessary for rejuvenation, recuperation. You need that. You need recreation in your life sometime. However, watch out for extended periods where you're wasting time. And you can waste time. It's easy to waste time now. You know, I talk to people all the time. I don't have the time that will sit for two hours wasting time. You ain't got no time. And you watch, you binge watch your favorite show for the last six hours. 
Ain't got no time. Went to bed 2 o'clock in the morning. <gasps> Ain't got no time. I have no time. I'm busy. I'm not saying you're not busy, but, but we need to check what we're really busy with. Amen. Boy, I know I'm talking right now. I felt that brick spirit rise up again. Y'all feel that brick spirit come up every now and then? I feel it. Not only do I feel a brick spirit resisting, sometimes I feel a brick being thrown in my general direction. Thank you, God, for the force field of the Holy Ghost. God got some angels right here. God blocked it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Sister Vani. God bless you where you're watching. Amen. God blocked it. All right, keep reading. And it came to pass in the evening time. In the evening time. That David arose from off his bed. David was on the bed. So it's even, you know, he was relaxing the evening. Even time, he rose from off the bed. Yes. And walked upon the roof of the king's house. He was walking on the roof of the king's house because you know he had a palace now. Amen. See, it's not like back in the day when he was sleeping outside in caves, running from Saul. He's a man now. Whoo, we in the palace now. We made it. Rising up on the east side. We up in, we in the palace. Watch it now. He's up here on the roof, on the rooftop patio, the rooftop terrace. And he's here and, you know, just relaxing in the evening. And what happened? And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And from herself. the roof. He saw a woman washing herself. Look at your neighbor and say, this is in your Bible. This is in your Bible. This is, this is not General Hospital or some soap opera that's on TV. This, this is not, you know, I don't even know what's the real soap that's the hottest soap now. Whatever it is, it's, it, this is in your Bible. He is on the roof. He looked down and he sees a girl taking a bath. Now, if you see somebody taking a bath, what are you supposed to do? Somebody, somebody show, show me what you're supposed to do. If you see somebody, if you come across the roof and you see somebody taking a bath, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to do... You're supposed to do amen. You're supposed to have the Holy Ghost look away. <laughs> Sanctify code, the blood. <laughs> Anybody ever done that? Am I the only one who's ever done that? I see something crazy coming up on my screen. The blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood. I do, I do. <laughs> see, y'all y'all couldn't hang with me because y'all think I'm just this a strange preacher. The blood. <laughs> look to the left. The blood to the right. What you pleading the blood against the screen? That's right. I passed, man, I have been in, in, in Walgreens. You know, you go to Walgreens and you're buying stuff and they got some magazines splat out right out here. And I've come up to, I said, the blood. And I put some magazine over it. <laughs> I think I'm messing with these. These managers are wondering who is covering up stuff that should be sold? Me. <laughs> now, I'm saying this and I'm saying this not because I'm super spiritual. Not at all. I'm saying this because I don't trust my flesh, and my flesh wants to see the magazine. I don't know about your flesh. My flesh wants to see it. So I fight my flesh actively. Amen. I'm in combat with it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying, because I don't trust it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't trust your flesh. I don't trust my flesh. So it's, I'm not, it's not because I'm more spiritual than you that I do this. Oh, pastor's just so spiritual. The blood, and, you know, and I'm just walking around, floating and... <laughs> Michael and angels. That's not what's happening. That's me going, the devil is a lie. I ain't going out like that. The blood. <laughs> That's what's happening. That's like, oh no, oh no. Demons of hell. Cover that. No. What's going on? I am, look, the Bible says flee fornication. Another part says flee youthful lust. That means when it comes to lust and when it comes to fornication, you don't stand and try to box with that. You run. Because nobody's that deep. I know some people feel that they're so, they're so deep. They can just walk into, hold it, baby. I got to hold it. If Just walk into the, the strip club and just go in there and I'm just going to evangelize everybody. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not even going to make it out of there. Sometimes I heard one pastor say he drives, he's driving. He says he's not even looking over there because he might see something he wants to see. Y'all better hear what I say. If I go somewhere to preach, if I'm not here, if my family is not with me and I go somewhere, I'm in New York or L.A. or I'm doing something and I'm preaching somewhere and I'm in the hotel room. Listen to your pastor. I never turn on the television in the hotel room. Say so your pastor's crazy. I don't want to see CNN. I don't need Fox News. I don't need it from the TV. I don't want to see anything. Why is the pastor doing this? Why am I telling you this? Because when I go in there, 
in order not to even open myself to any possibilities, I take precaution. Now, pastor sounds crazy. So what I do is I don't turn on TV. Why? I don't, want to see, I don't even want to see a commercial that might make me look cross-eyed. Because you know the devil uses commercials. She over here selling a tennis ball, scantily clad. Why you have to be in a bikini to sell a tennis ball? I don't know. Because sex sells. So because men are visually stimulated, women are stimulated more by what they hear than by what they see. Did you know that? Men are stimulated by what they see. Women are stimulated by what they hear. That's why the devil talks to women and just shows men stuff. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Who did the devil talk to in the, in the garden? He talked to the woman, stimulated by what they hear. Right? This is why, sisters, you got to be careful what you listen to. You need to learn how to stick your finger in your ear and say, la, 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 and just, <laughs> just block out some stuff from coming to you. Block it. Why do you have to block it? Because Satan speaks into the ears of women. Men, on the other hand, David, notice, he is on the roof. And what's he doing? He's, he's looking over the roof. And here's somebody taking a bath. And guess what David did not do? He didn't do the Holy Ghost look away. The blood of Jesus. Didn't do none of that. Mm -mm. David looked and he said, mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we have here? Read. Let's see what happens. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So the Bible is very clear that this girl tickled his complete fancy. The Bible is very clear. She was beautiful to look on. She looked good. The devil will not tempt you with what you don't want. If you like tall, dark, and handsome, it won't be short, plump, and light. Whatever it is that floats your boat, Satan will meet your price. I heard Bishop preach a message one time, said the price is right. Whatever it is, Satan will meet your price. Satan is like a poker player. I see your two, and I, whatever it is, he will meet you with the energy that you want. He, let me help you. Satan has actually been studying you all your life. He knows exactly what you want. He knows exactly what. So he's not going to put something in front of you that doesn't tantalize your senses. Because he already, you spiritual people in here, you sisters in here say, well, that's right. That's why, that's why I live for the Lord. The devil knows that you wouldn't even talk to some dudes. So he'll send somebody that has a mouth that sounds right. Hey, come on. They'll pass by. Oh, went to church last night. Okay, God bless you. Good to see you, sis. I appreciate you. Next day, did you get something to eat? I'm running down here. Come back. Let me pray over that first. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> hey, sis. I was wondering. I was reading something in the scripture yesterday. I don't know if you've ever seen this text right here. Have you ever seen that? I'm a, don't worry. I'm going to text it to you. What's your number? <laughs> I'm going to text it to you. Shooting that shot, and you just getting shot. Don't even know you getting shot. He's shooting that shot. That shot is not going over your head. It's going straight to the heart. Boom, boom. These are chest shots. Head shots. Kill shots are coming to your head. Because the devil knows if he comes looking like a devil, you're going to plead the blood. Because you know you, you sanctified. And so, mm -mm, I see you, demon. I see you for it. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I don't want you nowhere around me. Look at you. Talking about you going to the club. I don't deal with club people. God, here's a card. What you need to do is repent. Mm -mm. That's not how that brother's going to come to you. He's going to wait till you're having a bad day. You good? And then say some nonsense like, well, I know you pray, so I know it'll be all right. As if, yeah, boy, boy, we exposing that spirit tonight. Feed into it. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, he doesn't have to do none of that with dudes. I, that was for sisters. And men don't need any of that. The devil just put something in front of men. Like that? Look good to you? How's that look? Side profile? Front profile? Go for it. That's how the enemy works with men. Very different. You don't need to be no talking. No discussion is necessary. 
Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Oh, we're going to expose that devil today. He's looking over there, and he saw her, and she was beautiful. Read. And David sent and inquired after the woman. So David now, instead of turning away, he calls his servant. Hey, Johnny. Um, who's that? Is she new in the neighborhood? Is she new to the church? Is she new? Period. Read. And one said. One of the servants said. Is not this Bathsheba? The daughter this is of Bathsheba. The daughter of who? Eliam. Eliab. The wife of Uriah. The wife of Uriah. Of Uriah. Now what should have happened when he heard that part? Remember now he already messed up by looking too long. You know so he should have just repented over looking. Isn't that right? He should have repented. He should have, first of all he shouldn't have looked that long. Because that's voyeurism. You're watching somebody. You're engaging in voyeurism. It's pornography. It's what he's doing. Because uh, I heard one preacher say it like this. Brother Wilkerson used to say, backsliding is not a blowout. It's a slow leak. So if you keep looking at something long enough, eventually you're going to go after it. That's why pornography is so terrible. Because it'll just trap you and keep you. Y'all better hear this preacher tonight. So he's looking at the voyeurism. He's looking at this thing. And it got his attention before you knew it. He wanted, to, he wanted to stop looking because what you look at, eventually you want, to, you want to connect with. So he calls his servant and says, who is this? And they say, well, this is the wife of Uriah. Say it again. The wife of Uriah what? The Hittite. The Hittite. He, this, is, this is somebody else's wife. Oh, Lord. Keep reading. And David sent messengers. And David did what? Sent messengers. Sent messengers and said what? And took her. My goodness. So after we told you that this was somebody else's wife, then he sent other people. And that's the thing about sin. Sin always involves other people. Sin traps other people. Sin affects other people. You don't sin in a vacuum. Listen to me, children of God. What we do affects our brothers and sisters. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Say, well, I'm just doing this privately. No, you're not. You're affecting atmosphere. You're affecting your church. You're affecting your brothers and sisters. You don't even realize it because we are a community. Well, you say, well, I backslid and I'm out of church and I'm doing. No, even if you backslide and you're out of church, you still affect us because we're still connected to you. We're still family. Just because you leave the house don't mean you're not my, my child. Amen. Oh, how many in here ever? Oh, Lord, your heart will hurt and break. You'll love your kid no matter where they are. Amen. That's how God feels about his family. All right. So, so he's sending messages now. Go get this girl. Read. And she came in unto him. She came to him. And he lay with her. And he, notice it didn't say she came to him and she fought him. <laughs> What's my point? It takes two to tango. He sent. She came. He shot a shot. She said about it. And it was over. It just happened. They got themselves in trouble. Right there. Are y'all with the preacher here tonight? Y'all seeing what's going on here? She was complicit. So he knew what he was doing. And she knew what she was doing. And the devil didn't make them do it. They did it. Now the devil provided the atmosphere, the setting, the circumstance. Had her out there taking that bath right then. Had David... Not being where he should be, out of place. He's home when he should be fighting. Looking across the fence. Saw what he wanted. Put it in front of him. He sent for her. Now, there is a power dynamic at work here that makes David more complicit. Amen. Amen. So, so, so David is more to be blamed. First of all, David is the king. Second of all, he is the triple anointed. Third of all, he's God's man. Fourth of all, he is king. Did I say that first? Well, fourth. <laughs> yeah, be king. Yeah. Who going to tell? You going to tell the king no? The king sends for you. This girl ain't never been in no palace. She, he's, this, she's living. She walked in there, silk, satin, gold, silver, servants, music. And she was, I can see her. In my mind, I go, whoa, whoa. And this is David. He is the hero of Israel. Everybody looks up to this man. Y'all not talking to me. As soon as she saw him, she bowed the knee. 
Soon as she saw him, she bowed, your majesty. And he probably came, hey, 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 get up, get up. <laughs> she probably had her head down, your majesty, I'm sorry. I heard that you sent for me, your majesty. How can, he probably just took her by the chin. Just look, sniff it up. Say, call me David. <laughs> Enough with the formalities, all that your majesty stuff. You're good here. We're good here. <laughs> yeah. And there was no way she could resist that man. To resist him, she would have to have a real relationship with God. Where she had a made up mind that I don't care who you are. King. President, prime minister, I'm not going to hell for you. I am married. I got a husband named Uriah. That, now, that's the kind. Come on, sisters. That's exact. But you don't know. I don't judge her as harshly as people judge her. Because it was overwhelming for her. This is the king. She is alone. Her husband is away at war. Working for the king, mind you, all the time. She hasn't seen affection in a long time. She is in an environment she's never experienced. With the greatest man on earth at that time. The greatest man on earth. Amen. Oh, man. Lord have mercy. Somebody say, Lord have mercy. I don't know about you. I'm grateful for mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm thankful. And she lay with him. All right, well, let's see what's happened. Because we only got like, we don't even have any minutes, but. And she came and Can I get two more her. minutes or y'all got to go? Who give me two? Throw, up, throw your hands up if you give me two. All right. Somebody say five. I got five. Somebody give me seven. <laughs> All right. Go, go, go. Read, read, read from me. <laughs> and the woman conceived. The woman conceived. And sent and told David. So she sends a message to David. And said. Here's what she said. I am with child. I'm, I'm pregnant. <laughs> okay. I'm pregnant. I am pregnant. Okay. So that means she missed her period. There's no pregnancy test then. This is, this is B.C. Okay. So it's her time. Read. <laughs> and David sent to Joel. Saying, David said. Here's what David said. Here's David's solution. Send me Uriah the Hittite. Hey, um, General, send me that guy that works for me. You know, kid named Uriah. Yeah, look for him. Send him. Why? Read. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Here comes Uriah to David. When he sees David, I guarantee he walked in the same way his wife did. Your majesty, I heard you send for me. Y'all not talking. This is like this. this, this. <sighs> Francis Ford Coppola doesn't have anything on this. Read. And when Uriah was coming to da him, yep. David de demanded of him how Joab did. So he said, so David said, Making small talk. How's, how's Joab doing, son? Everything going good down in the war? Read. And how the people did. How are the people doing? Everybody, do, how's it going? Battle going good? And how the war so the whole time he's talking to this guy, he knows your wife's pregnant for me. <laughs> this is happening in his head. And he's making small talk. Read. And David said unto Uriah. David said to Uriah. Go down to that house. Hey, man, why don't you go, go down to the, stop by the crib. Just go down to the house. And wash that feet. And, 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 and relax. Take a load off. Spend some time with the missus. Because that's what soldiers do when they come home from the battle. I was a vet. And so I know when soldiers come home, man, that's a beautiful thing. It's a reunion. Anybody in here who got military background know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Read. And you ride the part of that of the king's house. Yes. And that followed him a mess of meat. And so David's treating him good. Send chicken, steak. I mean, everything he needed to have a wonderful evening. Yeah. Not no regular steak now. Ruth Chris steak. This thing is coming out sizzling. Outback steak. Hey, man, everything. This prime rib. What's the best steak? Porterhouse. Whatever they got. I mean, T-bone. It's going down. Read. But Uriah slept at the door. Uriah the said, I'm house. not going down there. He sleeps at the door of David's house. Why? Because he's loyal to the king. He loves David so much. Read. And when they had told David. So they tell David. Saying, hey, Uriah man. went not down to his Uriah, house. Uriah, man, Uriah not going down to the house, your majesty. What did David do? David said unto Uriah. David says to Uriah. Can, 
Comest thou not from thy journey? Hey, aren't you, don't you want to go home? And when thou didst, thou go down into thine house. And Uriah said unto David, mm -mm. The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. War is going on, your majesty. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord. The servants of my lord. Are encamped in open fields. Are encamped because he calls David lord. The servants of my lord are encamped in open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink? You think I'm going to go home? With my wife? To, to make love to my wife and have a good time? He said, as oh, no. Livest, and as, thy soul as livest, thou livest, I will not do and this as thing. thy soul livest, I'm not going to do this thing. Talk about loyalty to the king. Oh, this is, oh, this is off the chain. Why is Bible study going off the rails here? Read. And David said unto Uriah. And David said unto Uriah. Terry here today also and right. tomorrow. Stay with me today. And, and I tomorrow. And let thee depart. And I'll let you go back to battle. So Uriah bore in Jerusalem that day mm -hmm. and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And when David had called him. David called him. He did eat and drink before him. He called him in the evening. And he fed made him. him drunk. Got him drunk. So David now says, next plan. Plan B. Plan A didn't work. Here's plan B. I'm going to get him drunk. Because <laughs> when he's drunk. I'm sure he's going to do something stupid. He'll go home now. Read. And at even he went out to lie on his bed mm -hmm. and with the servants of his Lord. And instead of, even though he was drunk, he staggered down to the kitchen and lay down with the servants. But went not down to his He house. said, I'm not going. <laughs> drunk. He's loyal even in being drunk. I mean, you know David gave him the best. You know, this wasn't no regular live. This top shelf. He went to the, the $10,000 bottle of wine. I went to Burn Steakhouse one time, met the owner. He showed me the $10,000 bottle of wine as if. It was wasted. That trip was wasted on me. Thank you, Jesus. He then took us to the ice cream. You know, they serve ice cream upstairs. Now we talking. Praise God. That's, that's more in line with apostolic temptation. That's not, help us. Glory to God. Read. And it came to pass in the morning yep. that David wrote a letter to Joab. Plan C. So A didn't work. Can't get the man drunk. He's still not going. So plan C. David writes a letter. And he sent it to the hand of Uriah. Dear Joab. And he wrote in the letter. Here's saying, what I needed to do. Read. Set Uriah in the foremost, forefront Put of the this hottest guy battle. In the front part of the hottest battle and retire you from him and then leave him there that he may be smiting and that die. they will kill him there <laughs> I'm talking about David the Lord is my shepherd Amen. Amen. I shall not want Amen. he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, green pastures. he leadeth me beside the still water he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art thy rod and thy staff. They, thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my. Thou anointest my head with oil. My surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Put this man in the front of the battle. Leave him there. Make sure he's dead. And say, hey, come here, son. Hey, how you doing, son? Hey, appreciate your loyalty, boy. You're a good man. Could you give this to uh, uh, General Joab for me? Amen. And the boy goes down there, delivers the letter. Can you imagine Joab when he got that letter? Uriah walks in, and Joab is reading. I said, Let me see what you got. So something from the king? Okay. <laughs> Mm. Mm hmm. And this was from the king. the king. Yeah, with the king's seal. Okay. All right, son. Appreciate you. Head on back out to the troops. I'll talk to you later, okay? All right. Good man. Good man. Appreciate you. And sure enough, they did it. And he died. And then, you're going to have to wait till next week <laughs> to find out. Let's stand to our feet all over the building. Glory to God. Amen. We got to come back to Bible study. Whatever you are planning for next Monday, cancel that plan. Come back to Bible study. Praise God. Bring a friend. Amen. Let's stand to our feet all over the building. 
I noticed that the children haven't made their way out here yet. Almost like they wanted us to keep having Bible study. But, but you know, bless the Lord, I'm constrained by time. How many want to live for God? How many don't want to make the same mistakes that you see in the word of the Lord as a warning to us? And so here's what you have to do. The Bible says flee fornication. Furthermore, the scripture is very clear to abstain from the very appearance of evil. Don't tempt yourself. Do not align yourself with the devil and make it easier for him because he's going to always try to tempt you anyway. And like I said, he knows what you like. So, you know, sometimes people will see somebody and they judge other people because, you know, they're probably not tempted by the same thing that person is tempted by. Well, the devil will use what affects you. You know, if, 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 if you like chocolate cake, chocolate cake is what's going to be in front of you. Are y'all hearing the preacher? So don't be, don't, be, don't be judging that person. Oh, look at them eating all that vanilla. Mm, sinners just eating all that vanilla, just looking down their nose at the people. This church has to be a no judgment zone for people coming through that door. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not doing that. Because all of us could be in this story. I know we were talking about how David looked dirty, but David is dirty. And I know when I'm reading this right now, y'all saying, I never, I never would I ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever. Really? So put your hand up and tell me which one of you love God more than David. I want you to show me which one of you wrote a scripture that I need to be quoting. Like, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. You don't love God more than David. No. And David loved God. He wrote a whole, the longest chapter in the Bible, David wrote it. Psalm 119. The whole chapter, Psalm 119. You know what he's talking about? Talking about how much he loves the word. You don't even love the word like that because most of you haven't even, well, let me not say that. Some people haven't even read through Psalm 119. You got through Aleph, Beth, and you're like, oh, Ooh, this psalm going on. It's like the energizer, it never ends. Just, oh, this is a song that never ends for real. Mm -mm. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, David loved God with all his heart. I'm telling you what God said about David. Here's God's testimony about David. I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. So God's evaluation of David is different than yours. Because here's what God knows about us that we won't admit. That everything David did in that story, we're capable of it. From the most mild-mannered and shy of you to the most bold and aggressive of you, you don't know what your human heart is, is capable of. Because Jeremiah said, the heart of man is deceitful above all things. Watch this. And desperately wicked. So you can't trust your flesh. I don't care who you are in this place on the sound of my voice. And that's why we need to kind of calm down a little bit recognize we need God. So take the hand of the person beside you and say, we need God. Lift your hand and say, I need you, Jesus. I want you to cry out to him today and say, I need you, Jesus. Lift those hands. Let's pray. Pray amen for that person that you're holding. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. That you are able through your word to expose our own heart, to show us ourselves, to show us, Lord Jesus, what we need to run from, what we need to get away from, what we need to avoid. You don't want us to walk this way. You don't want us to fall into sin. Help us. Cover us under your blood, Lord Jesus. Cover our minds under your blood. Let our mind be stayed on you. Help us to focus on your word. Help us to focus on your name. Help us, Lord Jesus Christ, that, Lord God, you can be glorified in your church. You said, Lord God Almighty, that fornication ought not be named among us. And, Lord God, I pray that you cover us tonight. Let your angels surround your people. Thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Thank you for the blood that washes us and cleanses us and restores us. Father, I pray right Right now, in the name of Jesus, that a spirit of purity would grab a hold of every mind, every heart. Lord God Almighty, that we'd live for God, that we'd serve you and be delivered from the hand of the enemy. We put the devil under our feet and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, somebody ought to shout amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord, everybody. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. Amen. Remember to greet somebody before you go. Tell them you love them. Remember the prayer line tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Be on the prayer line. Church.
7.30 Wednesday. How many people have flyers for Easter? Wave your hands if you got Easter flyers. If you don't, grab some Easter flyers. Please, please, please give out Easter flyers to your friends and your family members. Give an offering to the wonderful gentleman in the back, Brother Kevin, standing. Don't be passing by, Brother Kevin. Sister Tilly, don't disappear. I need to see you. Amen. But don't pass by, Brother Kevin. Now, I want all of you to bless that man of God back there because we use that for our missions offering in the week. You can give online at yournlt.com forward slash give. And we've got snacks for you in the fellowship hall. God bless you. Greet somebody in Jesus' name.